Let's look at making buffers in QGIS 3. So making buffers and other geoprocessing tools have changed a little bit in QGIS 3 versus QGIS 2 um, in really good ways. I think buffers are a lot easier to use in QGIS 3. And I'll show you what I mean. So buffers, um, if we look at just libraries in New York City, buffers are going to make a ring around a point or a line or a polygon, therefore making that each feature bigger. So if I wanted to see 500 feet within any library in New York City, I can make um, I can make a polygon that includes that ring around every single library in the city using buffers. And there are a couple of ways of getting to uh, this feature in QGIS 3. The quickest way is always going to be the search box at the bottom. Um, so when you first get to the search box, it's going to be empty like that. You can start typing buffer. You pretty much want the first one and you specify which input layer to use. In this case, it's library. Um, if you hover over it, you'll get a little bit more information about it. And you see you're specifying a distance. So I said 500 before, 500 feet. Um, and it's showing you the units here, feet. And we'll come back to that in a moment. And when you're making a buffer, you can determine how many segments you want to use. And if you look over in the right here, it says it's the parameter that controls the number of aligned segments to use um, to approximate a quarter of a circle. So how many, um, it's not going to make perfect circles around your buffer, it's going to approximate it with lines. Um, so how many of those lines do you want? I would usually stick with the default, and then if that doesn't look good enough, um, then deal with it. Make it higher if it if you really need it. Five should be fine for most uses. And I'm not going to touch the other um, the other settings right now, and I'm just going to run it. And you see that happened. And if I you can see that it's overlaid on top of the library points right now. So if I zoom in a bit, I can rearrange these so that you see the points. You'll see that it looks as if the um, buffers are getting larger as we zoom in. That's because they are polygons and they're always actually the same size. So as you zoom in, they get bigger. The points rather, uh, the points are staying the same exact size because they're just points with whatever size you've specified in the style, um, this style. And as we zoom in, you can see the number of segments that were used is five, one, two, three, four, five. Um, it's fine as long as you're out about here. If you need it to be higher res, that's what you change. You'll notice also that we have multiple features um, one for each library. So if I use um, the Identify Features tool, you'll see um, this circle, this polygon, is still has all of the data from the original point data. Um, and I can see that. I can click through each of these and see them. It's hard to click them when they're so close together, but you can see um, often, depending on what you're doing with the buffer, you don't actually want every individual feature. Sometimes, usually, um, you'll want to uh, dissolve all of those features into one. If you're, say, just selecting things near um, other things, that's what you'll do. Um, so, for example, if the reason I buffered these is I want to see just the city bike, um, the city bike stations near libraries within 500 feet of a library. This gives me a nice handy way to do that. But probably I want 
the buffer is dissolved. So I'm going to rebuffer the libraries and when I do that I'll make sure I use the same distance, same segments, and I'm going to dissolve the result. So that's going to make one big feature and we'll see how that looks. Um, so now in these areas where there was overlap it just becomes one feature and it's actually one big feature so if I select any of these it, you see that it selects all of them and it <laughs> it just gets the attributes of I believe the first feature in the data set let's see uh, maybe not I'm not sure how it picked the feature to get the data um, the data is kind of useless at this point, it's really about the shapes. And if we look at, we can compare the dissolved to the not dissolved. All right. And then um, I was just making these as temporary layers. So if you want to keep it forever, or at least the next time you open QGIS, you'll want to export save features as, save it out to a shape file, Give it a good name. Give it a name like libraries buffered 500 feet, something like that. I'm not going to save it right now. Um, I want to show one more thing and then we'll be done. Um, so this, these are the city bike stations in New York City. It's a little old, um, so it's not fully up to date, but I just want to show buffering this. And um, I'll come down here, buffer, changing my distance to 500, and then, oh wait, look, degrees. And there's a little exclamation point here. It says distance is in geographic degrees, consider reprojecting to a projected local coordinate system for accurate results. So degrees are tend to be gigantic. Um, if you think of one degree of latitude. There are only uh, 180 degrees of latitude for the whole world, so 500 degrees is going to be really huge. I'm just going to do this as one degree just so we can see what that looks like, um, and I'll dissolve it. Great, so this is what's going to happen if you're in a bad projection. You'll get this egg effect. Um, and you can see this is the extent of the original data, and this is one degree around it. So you probably didn't want to do that, I'm guessing. Um, probably what you want to do is export the features and ch pick a local projection. In New York City, that's always going to be 2263. If that wasn't there, you can always press this button, search 2263, select it, um, and make sure you give it a good name. City Bike 2263. And now, just so we can see the full process buffer again, you see now that the units are in feet. Great. Now I'll do 500 feet and dissolve and run. And now we do not have one gigantic blob, which is far more useful. Um, so if you were in some other projection that was in meters, then your buffer menu will let you know that. Um, so if you're somewhere usually outside of the US, you'll be in meters, it will specify that for you. Um, which is a big improvement over QGIS 2. Alright, hope that helps.